Welcome to a new series of videos on YouTube from me, Gales Trails and Tales, which is as it sounds, me hiking paths around my beloved county of Cornwall and telling you the tales of the people who live here, the history, the folklore, the myths, the legends, and all the cool stuff that makes this a place that I love with all of my heart. Not just me, but also Bill. I'll be walking lost paths, smuggling routes, mining trails, cycling paths, coast paths, footpaths and lost paths. I think I've said that twice. But lost paths are the ones that we're not walking because it's quicker to take a shortcut or travel by car. So we don't want to lose our lost trails. So I'll be drawing a little bit of attention to them. We've got to go through a gate. So I'll be trying to draw a little bit of attention to the lost trails, the lesser trodded footpaths as well as the ones we know and love. And I'll also be interviewing and meeting some really amazing people along the way. Um, people with fishing heritage, whose families have been crab fishing for generations, farming, miners, all so that we can more contextually understand this amazing part of the UK. But enjoy day one of the Great Cornish footpath hike. I'll see you in a sec. Uh, proper mining country now there's lots of warnings along this part of coastline that say you know be careful there's open mine shafts a lot of them have metal grills pyramid type grills over them and the crisscross of trails across you have to be quite careful that you don't cause a bit of a slide of all the shale but also that you don't wander off the path or let your dog wander off the path because if they're not leashed and fall down holes that aren't capped there are still plenty of those knocking about this is a little valley down to chapel Porth and up the other side and then good boy on to poor treath bill bill don't pull <laughs> So then the problem is you end up on fast roads like this with the dog where you are having to walk on the road because maybe somebody didn't make the footpath very accessible. Hiking down into Port Tawen. Check out all the riders up there, the motorbikes. Oof. I've always quite liked Port Tawen. I spend quite a lot of time here in my late 20s when I had a camper van. My old uh, T25. Westphalia conversion? It was wrong hand drive from Europe and I loved it. Um, parking in the car park and drinking at the blue bar and sleeping the night back before it was like trouble because everybody was doing it. Because everybody wasn't doing it back then. But it's a nice place. And Bill and I are gonna go up and out the other side and enjoy the coast path from the footpath. It's not as busy as I thought it would be for bank holiday. Off we go, three and three quarters to Poor Tree. On to the coast path up the road. The acorn, that means the southwest coast path. That way. Colours in the hedgerows, bluebells, wild garlic, sea pinks. Amazing. And that. Mine shafts. You see the cap on the mine shaft? No straying, Bill. That's why, mate. That's why. Great. You're on your lead all the time. Yes. No running off cliffs for you. Good boy. Just peeing on a few sea pinks. Figuring out what's what. You're going to get picked up soon, aren't you? Because you might have nearly had enough walking for your little bones. So as well as lots of mine shafts and quite a lot of significant coastal erosion here along the path southwest of um, 
Porth Tower. Also on my left inland is a kind of secure area, um, airfield, airbase, something or other. Uh, not sure or that I'm allowed to know exactly what happens in there. Um, show you a bit more when we go past it. Um, which means you can't cut across there anyway, so obviously there would be nothing permissive to hike across because it's, I think it's probably MOD land, which is Ministry of Defence if you're not from the UK. Um, oh, this is interesting. But there's something in the soil that makes these really prevalent. It's almost like you'd see a bit swampy. I think I had a bit better. There you go. Any more? have to be careful that Bill doesn't accidentally pull me down these steep trails. Woof! Around the corner is extreme beauty, but in the meantime, trying not to let Bill <laughs> send me on my ass. Woohoo! And then you've got to go up the other side. Brilliant. But it could be a lot worse. You could be seeing my face talking to you when this is the view. Why would you want someone's face when you could have the gorgeous coast path? I think it's easy to forget when you live here how stunning these cliffs are. The north coast is a different beast. It's majestic, rough, rugged. The waves crash harder because they hit the land here first. Um, yeah, more of a brutal, stunning coastline of steep drops and wild waves. And the south coast, where I grew up, just over the way, a little bit more gentle, a little bit more protected, um, a different kind of feel to it. But I'm always reminded on the north coast of its brutal beauty. Um, and of course, all the mining heritage, which pits and scars its landscape, but also gives it that historical beauty, despite the damage done. Um, there's such rich cultural history here too. Sometimes you can see the empty holes in the cliff where a shaft uh, went through and then there's been erosion and the side of the cliff has fallen into the sea. And then there's one place where you can see part of a mine trolley, you know, that would go up and down the rails bringing the ore out, whatever material they were bringing out. You can see it kind of half out of the hole that's hanging off the cliff where, yeah, the erosion has exposed the shaft and one of the tunnels. Woohoo! Pretty cool. As mentioned, all through behind there. It's these that give us pause for thought. Steep on the way up, but the views are knockout. Bill, you ready to go slowly? Good boy. So hiking into Portreath, where we're going to go from being on the coast to heading inland on footpaths and we're going to take the Bizzo Mining Trail, which starts here and goes all the way across to the creek at Deverin on the south coast. Um, Mum's gonna come and pick up the dog. Yay, Mum's amazing! Because, uh, oh look, it's Pepper Pot. Up. There. Oh. Because the dog can't walk. Oh, well, the dog can walk. He thinks he can walk really far, but he can't because he's only a wee. So we've got to look after his growth plates and his legs and get him used to hiking 
he's a small dog, so it doesn't take 18 months necessarily for him to be able to hike with me long distances, but still, he's only 10 or 11 months, so gently, gently. Everywhere is full of more holiday homes than when I hiked this trail um, in 2020. Now it's early 2022 season and houses have been thrown up like they've been vomited out of people's wallets. And there's another second home. I'm not supposed to get political. I know I rent my place out on Airbnb when I'm away hiking, but it's my only home. I don't have a home that I don't live in. So I'm either hiking or using my house or post breakup staying in a caravan, um, which would otherwise have been empty. So in a farmer's yard, so it's fine. I need a coffee. So up there behind me, you can see the signs for the mining trails coming off of the coast path trail. So behind me, you can see people cycling. They're going to go and join the cycling um, mining trail that goes all the way to Devon. It's a really popular cycling route. And it's also, you can take horses on it. And it's also a footpath. So this is the end for the moment of being on the coast path. The Bizzo Trail does go alongside the road in a bunch of places. It comes down through here, you cross over Scoria House is up through there, very beautiful. And the traffic's pretty fast. So going across on bikes or even by foot, pretty tricky sometimes. The um, biking trails in these woods are pretty fun. You can kind of do some jumps and off-roading, off off-tracking. The bluebells are looking beautiful. I don't have my mic mic'd up, the old road. So you're gonna have to make do with crackles and crunches. Beautiful to be inland and it be so stunning. So John Williams of Scoria House didn't just run mines. He also sponsored adventurers, um, built incredible gardens extended Scoria House with his son and paid his workers with the Scoria Penny, which was currency mined from his own mines. It's pretty cool. Another little nice nugget is Scoria Gardens has the tallest monkey puzzle tree in the UK. If you're into your monkey puzzles, I quite like a monkey puzzle tree. Now we're heading here, St. Day. Historic village centre. Sunday has lots of mines and people's back gardens. It's a very lovely little village. Mm, you can hear all the traffic on the road. We're going through these swing gates, which are great for, uh, for the cyclists to nudge through. I'm so happy the sun's out. I always feel like these kinds of trees in these groups and green fields like that. The kind of thing you see stately home driveways, isn't it? Around stately homes, these stunningly looked after copses, copses. A copse or a copse? A little beside loop. No more cyclists for a second. Give us a wave, fellas. Lovely! Sunshine! Glorious! <laughs> Sky looks a bit moody, doesn't it? Might get some rain. Not yet, I hope. It being bank holiday Monday and all, there's uh, more people maybe out cycling on a Monday than you'd normally have, or even walking. But not that many more. It's not... I thought it'd be inundated Cornwall. Been pretty tame. Oh, moody skies. You do see quite a lot of signs like these on the footpath routes. I don't think he liked me filming the private property sign very much. Hm? Well, it's there to be read. Run! We are in Little Beside. What is the difference between a footpath, a public footpath, and a public byway? 
Does it mean you're allowed to go beside something? Love it. It's got in Cornish underneath, SD Bian, which actually sounds a little bit like Breton. Um, uh, Nestava Bihan is a little hamlet where we um, go and stay a lot. Um, sky's still looking moody. So this is a byway. Byway, highway, bridleway, footpath, permissive path. I'm going to figure out what they all mean so that I can tell you all about them. But I'm on a byway. Love to live somewhere like this. Up a little track. Hidden away. Back, 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 back. Obviously, footpaths have to weave in and out of real life because we use cars. I definitely use cars. So, we just have to see if we can get both things embraced. I don't like it when footpath is on a road like this and there's no actual footpath. It's always McDonald's. It's always McDonald's. It's always McDonald's that gets sprayed out of car windows and abandoned on the side of the road. Now we have bridleways. I'll be telling you about those too. And then you can see no motorbikes, mining villages trail. So much heritage around these air parts. Unfortunately, that's the plan. So, I arrived at Gwennett Pit and uh, there's a brave soul in there. It's, doing, it's like nearly a mile if you go around all of the circles. There's the pulpit where John Pre Wesley, not Elvis Presley, John Wesley would have preached. Natural acoustics. You can hear somebody doing some DIY in the background. So this was probably a natural depression in the land from potentially an old mining shaft or an old bit of mine work. And it had sunk. The fact that it doesn't actually fill with water in rainstorms kind of gives credence to the fact that potentially the water drains away down below to some workings. But obviously clearly safe. These seats can hold uh, maybe 2,000 people, I think, when they're all filled up. Although that seems like ever such a lot. But legend has it 32,000 was the largest congregation of Wesley. So this is from the mid to late 1700s and has been used as a congregational space uh, for the church ever since. It's very beautiful. Heading up Carn Marth, or towards the Carn, you meet all sorts around here. Hi! Would you like to be on YouTube? Have you got anything particularly you want to talk about? Thank you. Very handsome, very handsome, very handsome. Here's the trail. Up the con. There's a lake at the top of here and I'm gonna swim in it. So, made it to Carnmouth. You can hear an echo against the quarry walls. This is an old quarry, now flooded full of carp for fishing. That's John and Robin. Hi guys! Legends. Robin is my apprentice but also an amazing jeweller and an amazing illustrator. John is an incredible boatman, skipper, varnisher, drone pilot and apparently chef as I'm going to find out very shortly. Um, Stidians over there, reservoir you can see where I'll be hiking tomorrow. Over there is the amazing Khan Bray. I pressed the wrong button and cut you off. Amazing ley lines going over Cambrai. But tonight I'm going to be camping down there. So this is Carnmarth Amphitheatre. There's the stage. All of the seating is cut in. The exit's out there. You can see 
heading over towards Scythians over on the left there, out and away. And the acoustics are amazing. <laughs> There's plenty of lovely birds too. Hi. Okay, let's set up camp. Such a lovely spot. So peaceful um, and so lovely that the Carnmarth Trust and the fishing uh, community gave me permission to camp here for the night. You can't camp here willy nilly. You have to have permission. So, um, yeah, don't just come and camp here. Because that wouldn't be cool. They do lots of shows and stuff here. Come and enjoy it. Or seek permission and get a fishing permit and maybe do some fishing up the top. Very cool. Very cool. Look at that. Very cool spot to camp. Got her up. There she is. 